Hey there, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. And I got into astronomy as an amateur astronomer uh, back during the pandemic. And I'm sure there probably were a lot of other people too who started other hobbies or interest because there were thing, you know, limits on what you could do during the pandemic. Well, anyways, along the way, um, I also got interested in astrophotography and have been dabbling in that. And probably uh, many of you have as well. But what I've noticed is I've gone along, you know, learning amateur astronomy and astrophotography is you have these light bulb moments and you come to these kind of little milestones where you nudge forward a little bit because you, you know, had a pretty significant learning. And what I want to appeal to you if you're dabbling in astrophotography is if you are not using plate solving, you should be. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the reasons why you ought to start using plate solving in your astrophotography sessions. So let's get into it. Now that you've been doing astronomy for a little while, you've gotten pretty accustomed to setting up your equipment. You use the bubble on the mount to level the telescope mount. Of course, you'll be adjusting the deck axis by sliding the tube in the saddle and the RA axis by adjusting the counterbalance weight. Use a some type of polar alignment routine and you're also using probably one two or three star alignment routine to get your telescope mount aligned depending upon your equipment these routines vary a little bit but they're pretty much the same type of things you have to do to set up a telescope mount for usage you also have a guide scope with camera so that you can track a target and finally you're ready to move on to astrophotography so you get your cmos camera and one of the things you're thinking about is a target like the Andromeda Galaxy, because it'd be really cool to be able to take an image of the Andromeda Galaxy. You're probably thinking of a picture that looks something like this. So using an app like Sky Guide, you select the Andromeda Galaxy. It shows its properties, and you notice it's going to rise at a certain time and peak at a certain time. So from your location, this would be a good night to target the Andromeda Galaxy. And lastly, using an app like Astrospheric, you check out the transparency, seeing conditions, cloudiness. And in this example, you can see Friday would be a good night. So next, if you're using software like Stellarium to locate targets in the sky, and here I've searched for the Andromeda Galaxy and then slewed the telescope mount, and you can see it is currently pointing to this target in Stellarium. You might also use your hand controller, obviously you don't have to use Stellarium, to choose M31 and slew to the target that way as well. There are several different imaging software applications you might be using. I have SharpCap up here. And here we can see why we need plate solving. When we're capturing a single frame of a lot of targets, it's sometimes hard to tell if we have the right target in view. And so plate solving helps us to address that where we can have confidence that we have the correct target and it's centered in our field of view. So we have to keep in mind to produce our final image. We're taking a series of subs. We're stacking those, calibrating them, normalizing them. And in this example, the Andromeda Galaxy, I captured 119 subs. There were 90 second exposures. So there's many subs that go into producing the final image to capture enough data to give us what this looks like. So another factor that's involved is we have to set our exposure time and our gain to proper values to have a histogram that's correct. We don't want to cut off the black point on the left. We don't want to blow out the white point on the right hand side. And so this means that when we're capturing the individual frames, sometimes for some targets, it's hard to distinguish or make out the target to know for sure that we have it in our field of view. You've probably had this experience where you're um, trying to image a specific target, you capture a light frame, and you're scratching your head wondering, is that really the target that I'm after? So plate solving uses software to determine exactly where the telescope is pointing in the sky by comparing the star field in an image to a database of star positions. So the first thing you'll see it do is capture a frame, and then it goes and does its plate solving work. So when it matches the image stars, then the plate solving application or software can return the right ascension and declination of the center of the image. And then um, your software, along with like if it's integrated with something like SharpCap, can automatically realign your mount, send commands to 
ASCOM to realign your mount so that it's dead center on that target. Once your plate solving is done, you'll adjust your exposure time for what you want for your image capture, which I'm going for 90 second exposures for the Andromeda Galaxy. And although it's faint, you'll notice that it is now centered in our field of view. Here's another reason why you're going to like plate solving. This capture is from a different night. It's back in June. And the only thing I had done is polar align my telescope. I didn't do one, two, or three star alignment. And then I told it to slew to Vega. You can see Vega is selected here at the top right in Stellarium. However, in SharpCap, there's a faint star in view there, but that's definitely not Vega. So I'm going to do a plate solve and have plate solving realign my mount to the star Vega. So once it does the plate solving, it did an adjustment of 1.38 degrees of an offset. And now after the next exposure, we see Vega come into our field of view. It's not exactly centered, so we'll do one more plate solve to make one more minor adjustment, since this is the first time we're plate solving and the mount wasn't really even aligned. So we can see after the second plate solve, it's dead aligned to the center of our field of view. And each time we do a plate solve, the mount's alignment is getting more accurate because it's also doing a sync to target afterwards. So let's look at another example of plate solving. I will slew to Messier 5 or the Rose Cluster, and then we'll do a plate solve on that target. Our exposure time is not very much, so we see a faint image of the cluster there, top right, and we will um, increase the exposure time to 15 seconds and do a plate solve. So here we can see that it's downsampling. It found many sources. It's made an offset adjustment of 0.11 degrees. And then at the next frame capture, we can see it's more aligned to the center of our field of view. I'll do one more plate solve just to fine tune that last adjustment. It made one more slight adjustment of 0.02 degrees. So we see it fairly centered in our field of view. So let's do one more example. I've chosen to slew to the beehive cluster and once the mount slews there, we'll do a plate solve on it. So we can see in sharp cap once an exposure completes, it's actually fairly well aligned. Our uh, previous series of plate solving has um, improved the alignment of the telescope overall and so it's not very far off. We'll do a plate solve and we'll see how much it adjusted. So here we see it capturing the image, reading it, down sampling. It finds 800 something sources and makes an offset adjustment of 0 0.06 degrees. So it's obvious that the previous plate solving episodes we did improved the alignment of our mount as we're now not having to do much of an alignment when the plate solve occurs. So here's another example of the difference between one frame and the processed image. I see 405. I did 180 second exposures, gain of 71. Notice here in this folder where I have the raw data, I captured a total of 66 subframes. So let's open up one of the subs in GIMP and take a look. Looking at this, could you tell that this is IC405, the Flaming Star Nebula? So if we look at the final processed image of IC405, the Flaming Star Nebula, you can see that it's almost impossible to tell if you're looking at a subframe if you have the right target in your field of view. Again, subframe, processed image. One more example, NGC 6960. Notice the exposure 120, gain 83. And now notice that I captured a total of 45 frames or subframes. And let's take a look at one of the individual subframes. And we'll open that in GIMP. And we can see, looking at this individual sub, it's hard to make out what this actually is or understand if it's really our target. So now opening the final processed image where we combined all the data that we captured, now you can see the nebula that's there. So once again, the individual sub and the post-processed image. I'm not a proponent of any one plate solving software. I'm sure they all have their disadvantages and advantages. I'm just showing the one I've been using, All Sky Plate Solver. It's a free download. This page shows the basic screens, what those screens do. And I'm not actually using these screens much because I installed the indexes it has with the wizard. And then the integration is there with SharpCap. So I can do the plate solving directly from the SharpCap menus. But you can click on this download button and that will download and install.exe and then you install it on your computer.
If you decide to use this software under indexes, there's an index installation wizard. Once you open this, on the right hand side there's an index calculator. You can enter the details of your telescope and camera, or you can open a FITS file and retrieve that data from the header of the FITS file. Then what it's going to do is, on the left hand side, it's going to start downloading a set of indexes that correspond to your equipment settings that you provided. It's important to keep in mind that field of view. If you always use the same field of view when plate solving, like the largest one available on your camera, then you could just install those indexes. But if you're going to do plate solving with various field of view sizes, you may have to go through these steps a few times to get all of the different indexes you need for the different fields of view that you commonly use. So to tie this together in SharpCap under File Menu, SharpCap Settings, then there's a Hardware tab. You can choose your mount here under Select Hardware. Normally you've already been through like setting up your mount with ASCOM and you have that already configured and you would just choose it from the list. And what this allows us to do is we can now connect our SharpCap instance to our telescope mount and issue commands to control our ASCOM telescope mount. Also on the right under camera when your camera is connected if you scroll all the way down there's a little checkbox where you can connect the mount. And then the other thing that's important to this detail is under tools there's two options plate solve only and plate solve and resync. Once you have that hardware configured like I showed you in that settings you can actually do plate solve and resync which is important because not only does it adjust your mount when it does the plate solve to realign it to the target but it sends the commands to resync your mount, which is improving the alignment of your mount and recording the location of that specific target. So as you do successive plate solves, the alignment of your mount is improving along the way. Obviously, I'm not making an appeal to seasoned astronomers or astrophotographers. They're already well beyond this point. But really, just the audience I'm seeking here is uh, people who are newer to the hobby and trying to learn ways to improve. And obviously I'm still learning. And you know, just like my channel, Mark's Astro Journey, I think it is a journey because there's so much to learn about astronomy and astrophotography. But anyways, I hope uh, this topic of plate solving and seeing the different examples is something that will help you if you haven't ever been using plate solving or you haven't really figured out how to use it properly because it really does make a huge difference when you're trying to target some deep sky object and you know, you're know you trying to see in SharpCap or whatever imaging software you're using, do you have that object in your field of view? Is it the right object? Is it centered? Um, plate solving makes such a huge difference when it comes to that. So if you enjoy videos like this, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And also I encourage you to give me a thumbs up if you like the video or leave comments if you have other things you'd like to share on this topic. Clear skies.